Now watch, keep an eye on my cords. Once I try to spread the floor out, you can see that my entire cord, especially my lateralis, the outer muscle of the cord, is nicely active. So the spreading of the tal, it does what? It activates your cords and most importantly, it activates your glutes. Now watch from the side profile. <clears throat> now watch your glute activity. Here. Now I have kept my toes out, but as I spread the floor apart, watch. As I spread the floor apart, it has activated my glutes. So your gluteus medius and minimus, which is on the side of the hip, is nicely activated. And that is for what? That is for pelvic stabilization. So your pelvic is like a bucket. Now this bucket can sway back and forth. And if your bucket starts swaying back and forth, the bucket is holding your spine. So bucket moves, spine moves. Stability of the bucket, stability of the spine. Very simple. So stand, keep your toes pointed out and then tear the floor apart. So when you tear the floor apart, it activates your cords, it activates your glutes. Now you are ready to sit down. So when you sit down, what you have to focus on, wherever your toes are, whether they are pointed straight or whether they are pointed out, make sure that your knees go in the direction of your toe. Now since I am talking about my own case and people with slightly deeper hip joint, when the toes are pointed out, this Tearing the floor apart helps a lot because, watch, <clears throat> as I keep them out and as I sit down, watch my knees, they are nicely over my toes. Now because my glutes are nicely active, they are holding my knees out. But as they collapse, see watch what will happen to my knees. The knee collapses in, the foot collapses in. And that's a recipe of disaster for your knees, for your ankle. So before you start lifting weights, before it could hurt your spine, it has already started hurting your ankle, your knees and your hip. So the glute activation when you stand, it is extremely, extremely critical. So first, before you start squatting, learn how to stand properly. So I repeat. <laughs> Space between your heels, toes are slightly pointed out, tripod activated and then tear the floor apart. So that has activated my glutes, that has activated my cords and as you sit down, now the next point comes how to sit down. Watch me. I have seen a lot of time where trainers put their hands around the knee so that the knee doesn't move forward. Now there is a reason why a 6 feet individual will have a longer foot than a 5 feet individual. Again anthropometrical symmetry. The reason being the foot is a base of support. So if the foot, if the foot is shorter for a taller individual, they would walk like the Japanese girls. Baby steps. The reason why the foot is longer for a taller individual and that is biomechanics. Taller structure needs wider base of support. Now, as you can see, my knees right now, my kneecap right now is just above the ankle. Can you stand? Now, but watch my kneecap as I sit down at the bottom of the squat. You would notice that my kneecap is right in line with my foot. What I mean by that, my longest finger is my second toe. So when I sit down, you would notice that this kneecap is right above my second toe. And that means it has so much of room to move. It means the lower leg bone called as tibia. In lay English, it's called shin. Right now the shin is perpendicular to the floor. But at the bottom of the squat, you would see that the shin will be at slightly an angle. Which means it will move forward. So try to notice that at the bottom of the squat, my tibia, my shin and my spine will most likely be parallel to each other. Watch. <coughs> yes. <sighs> so 
see the angle of the tibia and the angle of the spine is parallel picture book and why now watch if i try to push my knees behind what most trainers say now watch what would happen to my hip and correspondingly to my spine if i try to push my knees behind see my hip comes up my spine becomes rounded can you see it now as i start pushing my knees forward see what happens the bucket drops down the hip joint the hip bucket drops down and the spine remains erect now why i am able to do it without knee pain without any discomfort and that is purely because of the ankle joint mobility which means my calves are flexible enough to allow my shin bone to move forward if my calves were stiff if my plantar fascia that is the fascia underneath your foot was tight i would not have been able to push my shin slightly forward so soft tissue mobility is extremely extremely important excuse me is <coughs> something in the lunch <coughs> so trainers who advise people to squat against the wall what i mean by that i have seen some videos where people actually facing towards the wall and trying to push their knees ahead now the whole point of squatting is to be able to sit down without raising your foot off now watch me again my knees are right above my ankle now as i sit down because of the enough ankle mobility my knee cap is right above my toe now if i want to push my knee cap beyond my toes see what will happen you can see that my heels have risen off so it's pretty evident that you're not supposed to push your knees beyond your toe but they should be in line with your toe and that's the reason god or nature with whatever you call it has given us proportion anthropometrical proportion so when you sit down in a comfortable way your knee cap will exactly be in line with the longest toe of your foot and that's symmetry that's again physics the entire world the entire universe is governed by the laws of physics and we are no except to it <clears throat> now there are three things what i spoke about the stance that includes positioning of the toes second thing was activation of the tripod and third thing was turning the floor apart and then you begin to sit down now while sitting down watch <clears throat> while sitting down the most common error what i have seen in most people is they are hip dominant squatters what i mean by hip dominant squatters is they initiate the squat with the hip hinge and then the squat starts now see what has happened now imagine there is a glass whether you call it glass of whiskey or wine choice is yours or milk because apparently that is healthy so a glass of milk is kept on your shoulder now when you start sitting down initiate from the hip the milk will spill out so when you sit down there has to be corresponding action of hip and knee simultaneously what i mean by that neither you should be hip dominant that is initiation from the hip nor you should be knee dominant now watch knee dominant hip dominant it has to be in sync which means both joints should move correspondingly at the same time watch yes <clears throat> you're holding the bar <sighs> so the hip and knee will move simultaneously watch simultaneously simultaneously and this is another reason this is one of the reason why you would never see me squatting facing the mirror or you would never see any of my client squatting and facing the mirror because you're not supposed to see yourself when you squat again my basic question to everybody when you use indian toilet to defecate there is is there a mirror in front of you to see yourself how you sit down no it would be quite funny and quite gross as well <clears throat> 
But all I'm trying to say is, you can sense your body. You can sense your actions. You can be blindfolded. At the same time, you can eat. And zillion times, your hand will not miss the target. That's because the joints, they do have receptors which convey message to our brain about its location. So right now my hand is in space, floating around. But whether it's forming a circle, whether it's forming a straight line or a horizontal line, my brain can sense it because the action is still happening around shoulder. And even if I'm blindfolded, I can still sense it. And that is called as proprioception. So that is called as sense of our own movements. Or in layman's term, let's call it mind muscle link. So proprioception, the ability to sense your own movements, we all are born with it. That's the reason a blind person can eat without missing his or her target. So when you sit down, even if I close my eyes, see, even if I close my eyes, I should be able to sense where my knees are. Are they collapsing in? Are they going too wide? Am I moving my hip first? Am I moving my knees ahead? Yes, I should be able to sense it. <clears throat> I know there is one thing what I constantly say to my clients when I coach them, that lifting weight is an art of meditation. Now, it sounds quite ironical because meditation is all about calming yourself down. And lifting weights is about explosiveness, power. But get the point. Meditation is also about being centered at one task, being focused, having laser sharp focus. It's like bullseye. You know your target, eyes on the prize. So when you squat, when I squat, I'm actually meditating from here. And what am I meditating? I'm focusing on one simple task and that is to sit down to get up. And while I'm doing so, I'm not looking at myself in the mirror. And even if I'm blindfolded, I can sense myself. So do I need a mirror? No. Does your client need a mirror? No. Then how does your client, how can your client sense his or her action? Of course they can sense it. You as a coach, make sure that you teach them, make them do it and you record their videos. That's called video analysis, which I do it regularly to my clients. Although they've been training with me for sometime like four years. I make sure that I record there because when you see your own actions, you know how graceful it can look. Sometimes you can sense it, but you can't see it. So even in my own case, I still every single session of mine, I make sure that I really, really, really record my videos, not just to post on social media to update you or to share knowledge with you. But most importantly, that is called an assessment session for me. I assess myself. So I know for the fact that where am I going wrong? And nobody is perfect. So one of my clients asked me this, what keeps me hungry when it comes to knowledge? So I say that, you know, I'm relatively confident because I know things. So one of the greatest philosophers said one thing that I know that I know something. But at the same time, I know that I don't know everything. Which means, I know something that keeps me confident. I can convey my message convincingly. But at the same time, if I know that I don't know everything, that will keep me humble. That will always keep me hungry, that I don't know everything. So let's get as much as you can. Same with respect to coaching skills. Same with respect to building your skills. Now, the reason I'm calling skill, because to be able to sit down and get up and looking like a machine, a machine who is designed to do the task day in, day out, till it warms out completely. You should look like a machine. And I'm here, I'm not talking about whether you lift your own body weight, whether you lift two times or three times than your body weight. Grace should never be compromised. Look at those uh, horses, whether they stroll or whether they run fast, they never lose their grace. Now, Lewis Hamilton, the current seven times world champion,